The solo Wonder Woman movie has received many positive reviews before its official release and really seems to have steered the overzealous DC Extended Universe on the track of well-made movies that focus more on being comic book accurate rather than taking too many risks that hardcore fans and critics have been deterred by. That being said, Wonder Woman is a film truly for everybody and its message of love is a positive change from DC films prior. But it's the twist ending that comes out of nowhere that may leave viewers confused. So before I go any further, keep in mind, everything from here on out has major movie ruining spoilers to Wonder Woman, so you've been warned. The big questions we're left with are how exactly did Sir Patrick of everyone thinking that General Ludendorff was the god Ares instead of himself, and why didn't Diana's mother Hippolyta tell Diana what she really was? So before I go into that, first the breakdown and recap leading to the film's conclusion. The solo Wonder Woman film serves as Princess of Themyscira Diana's origin story. From her beginnings being made out of clay and brought to life by Zeus making her Zeus's daughter, to becoming Wonder Woman protector of Earth. Throughout young Diana's childhood, her mother had told her the story of Zeus and the God of War, Ares. No, wrong God of War. The, that, that's Greek mythology, Ares, not the DC Comics, Ares. There we go. Diana's mother would tell her the story of how Zeus created man, including the Amazons, but man who was filled with such greed and hate turned their back on the gods that created them. Ares, son of Zeus, wanted to destroy mankind because he believed that Zeus's creation was a failure. Zeus did not want this, so he defeated Ares in battle, but was killed in the process. Zeus, knowing that one day Ares would return with his last dying breath, created the secluded island of Themyscira so that Ares would not be able to find the Amazons. The gods also gave the island many other gifts in the form of weapons and armor, including a sword known as God Killer, a weapon Zeus gifted for the specific purpose of defeating Ares. Or so we think. As Diana grows up, her training becomes more and more intense. She is trained harder than any other Amazon on Themyscira, and it's soon clear to everyone that Diana is far more powerful than anybody knows. Enter British spy Steve Trevor, who crashes near the secluded island after being chased by the Germans because he stole a notepad from Dr. Poison containing all her notes for a powerful new kind of gas that would win the war for the Germans. Trevor mentions one man being at the center of this great war in general, Ludendorff. Diana, believing that this man is the return of the god Ares, decides to leave her island paradise, the only place she's ever been in her life, to go defeat General Ludendorff believing that once he alone dies that this war will end, as legend has said. Before the two leave and Diana's mother Hippolyta says her goodbyes, it's hinted at that there's something much deeper about Diana that she's not telling her. As she says after Diana has left, the more she knows, the sooner he'll find her. Hinting that she's decided not to tell Diana that she is in fact the god killer, not the sword, because only a god can kill a god. And I mean like, gee thanks mom, thanks for sending me into a war with a sword that's pretty much useless then. Anyway, once Diana and Steve Trevor make it to hideous London, Steve must go to his superior and show him evidence in Dr. Poison's notebook formula, and says that we need to launch an all-out assault now if they have any chance of surviving the war. Around this time is probably the most important part of the film, but you'll really have to watch it a second time to fully understand all the little intricacies. Before handing Sir Patrick the notepad, Steve and Diana barge into the British meeting about the war in which everybody wants a peaceful solution and simply no longer wants to be a part in. An armistice, if you will. And it's Sir Patrick who's vocalizing this proposal. But how can that be? If he is truly the god of war who covets battle, why would he want peace for all sides? It's not explained in the film that I can recall, for that you have to understand the comic book Ares opposed to the Greek Ares who he's based on. In later comic book adaptations, Ares is capable of possessing a single human. He would then strategically move them up the ladder of power, if you will. In this case, he chose Sir Patrick who became, or already was, the speaker on behalf of peace for the British. So why not possess General Ludendorff instead? It's at this point we skip through the awesome action sequence and the German gala event in which I guess Diana had the god killer sword tucked in her butt. Ouch. And recall the story of Zeus and Ares once again. If you remember, back before Ares was defeated by Zeus, he wanted mankind, Zeus's creation, to be destroyed. So by taking Sir Patrick's body instead of Lutendorf, he knew that Diana would never suspect him. Ares also took Sir Patrick's body because he wanted to see just how evil man was, so he also took a ghostly form to whisper into the ears of Lutendorf and Dr. Poison so that he could make man destroy themselves without Ares having to actually physically intervene. This is why Dr. Maru was able to finish her deadly poison formula without her stolen notebook. This plan of Ares was done as a ploy to prove to Diana that man does truly have hate in their hearts and that mankind is destined to destroy themselves with war anyway. And as why Sir Patrick as Ares never chose to kill Diana when he knew who she was, even though he knew the only thing that can kill a god is another god, which Wonder Woman is. A demigoddess to be more specific. Ares wanted Diana to join him and together they would both destroy Zeus's creation. 
but Diana, now letting go of her naivety of people, understands that yes, while there is a lot of hate and darkness in people, there's also light in there somewhere too. And instead of choosing to focus only on the hate within people, she chooses to believe in love instead. And as the story of Zeus and Ares is told in the beginning, now that Diana has killed Ares, war is finally over. At least, you know, in this movie universe. After all, in reality, there's still like World War II, the Cold War, Civil War, the Gulf War, the Tupac and Biggie Rap War, you know, many, many wars. So I guess, hey, Wonder Woman can't stop all wars. A girl's gotta have some me time, yeah? And as we flash forward in the film and Wonder Woman flies off into the sunset, not literally, to continue her adventures as Wonder Woman, protector of Earth. And that's the ending explained, breakdown, and recap of Wonder Woman. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below, and tell me your thoughts on the film. Also comment if you are more excited to see Diana in Justice League after watching Wonder Woman, or less, since you'll be getting a lot less screen time as DC has to figure out how to try to balance all these new characters. And what future DC film can you not wait to release? And don't forget, as always, this is Five Things Explains Everything, with the Finga Bang Show, Believe in Love.